All right, so today we're going to be talking about solving uh, equations. So we need some properties and, and to discuss some properties here. The first one is reflexive. So reflexive um, is A equals A. Our example is 5 equals 5. So I kind of think of that as like reflection. Uh, so that kind of helps me to remember that it's the same thing. Uh, symmetric. If A equals B, then B equals A. So it doesn't matter which side of the e equation it's on, it's still going to be a true statement. So if 1 half equals 0.5, then 0.5 equals 1 half. There's your example. Transitive property. Uh, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So it's kind of cutting out that middleman, so to speak. So if uh, 2.5 equals 2.5, and 2 and a half equals 5 halves, then 2.5 equals 5 halves. <clears throat> Substitution. If A equals B, then anywhere I see a B, I can replace it with an A, and vice versa. So I can uh, interchange those uh, as much as I want. So if A equals B and 9 plus A equals 15, then I can substitute in for uh, A, I can substitute B. 9 plus B equals 15. Uh, addition, the last four are addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So addition says that if I have two items that are equal, so if A equals B, then A plus C has to equal B plus C. So our example is if X equals 12, then X plus 3 equals 12 plus 3. Uh, subtraction, so if A equals B, then A minus C equals B minus C. Our example is if x equals 12, then x minus 3 equals 12 minus 3. Okay? Uh, multiplication, if a equals b, then ac equals bc. I have the product here. If x equals 12, then x times 3 is going to equal 12 times 3. And the last thing is division. Uh, if a equals b, then a over c equals b over c. But we have to have a constraint on c. Okay, C cannot equal zero, so we can't divide by zero. Our example is if X equals 12, then X over three equals 12 over three. We're not dividing by zero. So we're gonna use these properties to solve equations. So the first one we're gonna do is a, a nice, uh, straightforward one-step problem, <clears throat> okay? So I have X plus four equals negative 12. Uh, so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to isolate my variable. So I'm going to bring this 4 to the other side by doing the opposite. So I'm going to subtract uh, both sides here. So that's going to give me negative 16. So there's my value of x. The next one is, is getting a little bit harder. We're going to do what we call a multi-step problem. So in a multi-step problem, uh, it just means that you have multiple steps. So here, when I look at this problem, the first thing I notice is that I have variables on both sides and I have a distribution problem. So I want to take care of that distribution first. <clears throat> so I'm going to take 3, I'm going to multiply it by y and get 3y. Three, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Now I still have variables on both sides. Personally, I like to move my variables first just because then it, I don't get... Uh, messed up and, and have a negative variable or something like that. So I take my smaller coefficient and move it to the other side. So I'm going to subtract off 3y from both sides, okay, using the subtraction property. So I got negative 27 plus 3y equals negative 9. Now I have my only one y. So I'm going to isolate it. So I'm going to take this 27 and I'm going to get it to the other side. So I'm going to add, I'm going to use the addition property. I'm going to add to both sides. 3y equals, well, 27 minus 9, or negative 9 plus 27 is 18. And the last thing I'm going to do is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and get y equals 6. Okay? So that's a multi-step problem. Now, these aren't the only type of problems we have. Sometimes what we have is we have problems where we don't have a solution, or we have infinitely many solutions. So we're going to kind of take a look at, at those and kind of talk about what happens in them. <clears throat> so here's our first problem. We have 11 uh, plus 3x minus 7 equals 6x plus 5 minus 3x. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of simplify each side. So I'm going to combine like terms. I notice here I have an 11 and I have a, a minus 7. So I'm just going to combine those. 3x plus 4. Over here I'm going to combine my, my like terms. So 6x minus 3x gives me 3x plus 5. Okay, I'm going to get my variables on the same side. So I want to bring my, one of my 3x's over, so I'm going to subtract 3x minus 3x. 4 equals 5. Well, when does 4 equal 5? Never happens. Okay, so that's not a true statement. So this is an example of no solution. Okay, right? there isn't a value of x that's going to make that work. So let's look, so anytime I have two, two uh, constant values that is not the same, no solution. So here in our next one, we're going to do that kind of same process of simplifying. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I have 6x minus 2x, that gives me 4x plus 5 equals 4x plus 5. Now right here, you might actually see something right there. We're going to kind of take it one step farther. Uh, some of you might notice right now that they have the same on both sides. Everything's identical. I'm still going to subtract off my 4x just to make it easier to see. 5 equals 5. That's a true statement. So this is um, all reals. Okay. So this is going to give me infinite mini solutions because it doesn't matter the value of x that I plug in. It's going to be all the values. Okay, so I have an infinitely many. many. Uh, this kind of leads us to literal equations. Those are equations that are formulas you've had uh, converting Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. Those are called literal equations. So that's solving equations.